Coffee Break Italian, Season 2, Episode 20. Buongiorno e benvenuti a Coffee Break Italian. Io sono Mark. Ciao a tutti, io sono Francesca. E io sono Ayla. We're back with another episode for you. This is actually episode 20 and it marks the end of the first half of Coffee Break Italian season 2. We're halfway through the course. Wow, mamma mia, <laughs> così veloce. Così veloce, sì, è so fast, so fast. Can you say in Italian time flies when you're having fun? Sì, eh, solamente diciamo il, il tempo vola. Il tempo vola, I think we've spoken about this before. Sì, il tempo with vola. Katie, I think. Yeah. <laughs> il tempo vola. Quando ci si diverte. Ah, and there is a good reflexive verb in there. Sì. But the construction is a little too complicated there, so I think we'll just move on. Mi sembra una buona idea. <laughs> okay. Ayla, how are you today? Come stai? Molto bene, grazie. E tu? Sì, benissimo. Uh, allora, cosa hai fatto al fine settimana? Putting you on the spot here, because I know that you're not, <laughs> yes, you're not prepared, not prepared anything. anything. But I'll give it a go. Um, sono andata a un matrimonio. Ah, matrimonio? Oh, sì. Ah, ok. Di, di amici di... o di, di famiglia? Di amici. Ok. E ho mangiato... I'm not too sure the word for this. I'm trying to say haggis. <laughs> Francesca, that's one for you. Well, there is not really an Italian word for haggis. It's a Scottish... Uh, it's a delicacy. Scottish delicacy. Yeah. <laughs> so what do we say? Uh, Laggis. Laggis, okay, with an apostrophe okay. in there, yeah. Sì, sì. <laughs> okay. So it would be, ho mangiato laggis per la prima volta nella mia vita. Non ci credo, per la Veramente. prima volta. Sì. <laughs> non hai mangiato laggis prima. I'm a bit embarrassed to admit it, but I have never tried haggis before. Ah, ti è piaciuto? Sì, mi è piaciuto molto. Ah, benissimo. Uh, Francesca, tu hai mai provato laggis? Eh sì, l'ho assaggiato appena sono arrivata qui in Scozia otto anni fa. Ah, e ti è piaciuto? Eh sì, non è male, però <ride> non, non potrei mangiarlo tutti i giorni, ecco. Oh, va bene, va bene. Ok, now this is interesting because we're talking about this mai. And mai literally means never, especially when it's combined with non, but it's also used to talk about if you've ever done something and of course it works really well with the perfect tense so this is the topic of today's lesson mm, interessante. interessante allora yeah. sapete già cosa sto per dire sì. mettiamoci al lavoro e io vi ascolto okay now we've been talking about the passato prossimo the perfect tense and we've looked at it with Verbs that conjugate with avere, with essere, and we've also looked at a particular verb. Piacere. Yeah, and also the reflexive verbs. Sì. Now, today we're going to be looking at one particular word or one particular construction, which very often is associated with that perfect tense, and it's the idea of asking if you've ever done something, or indeed if you've never done something. Because there's one word that we're going to introduce, and we actually covered it in the in the introduction section there, and it's very, very useful because it's a versatile little word, Francesca, isn't it? It's the word mai. Mai. M-A-I. And it kind of means two things. See, never and ever. Which is a little bit ironic because they mean the opposite of each I other. Know. <laughs> but the thing about it is in Italian, we simply make it negative by introducing a non before it and then it becomes si. never. Let's look at some examples. Um, we already asked the question, Hai mangiato laggis? Have you eaten haggis? But if you want to say, have you ever eaten haggis? Then we put in the mai. Hai mai mangiato laggis? Hai mai mangiato laggis? It sounds a little funny because we've got the ai, the part of a very for tu, and then mai, which rhymes with it. Hai mai mangiato laggis? Have you ever eaten haggis? Hai mai mangiato laggis? It's, it's a good a good expression. See, si, and the whole structure is really good, especially I'm thinking of our learners when they go to Italy and they get to know new people. I'm sure all the Italians will ask them questions like, uh, eh, hai mai visitato il Colosseo? Have or, you ever visited the Colosseum? Sì, si, o hai mai provato il Chinotto? Ah, il Chinotto, that's a, it's a dark, dark flavoured sweet drink, isn't si, it? Yeah. Si, kind si. of like a soda, uh, uh, si, uh, something si. like that. It's the Italian 
cola. That kind of thing, yeah. It tastes a little different, I have to say. Um, so, hai mai provato il chinotto? Um, we can equally use it with uh, essere verbs. Sì, ad esempio, sei mai stato in Sicilia? Have you ever been to Sicilia? And remember, stato is the irregular past participle of essere. essere sì. So, have you ever been to, uh, to Sicilia, to Sicily? Okay. We need to talk about how we would answer that question. Have you et- ever eaten haggis, for example? Let's stick with our Scottish haggis example. Sì, sì, siamo un po' scozzesi oggi. <laughs> so what are some possible answers, Francesca? Okay, we've already mentioned mai and we, can, we could say no, non ho mai mangiato l'aggis. So there in the answer we're saying no, I have never eaten haggis. And there, the mai is the same word, but we're putting a non in front of the verb. No, no, mai mangiato lagis. And that, of course, means that we would translate it slightly differently in English. We would say, no, I have never eaten haggis. I guess we could say, I have not ever eaten haggis, but it sounds a little funny in English. Ah, I guess it does. <laughs> I've never eaten haggis. No, no, mai mangiato lagis. Okay, but what if we have tried haggis? Well, in that case... You might want to use the già. Si ho già mangiato l'agis. Think about this in English. If we said, have you ever tried haggis? And you had, then you might just say, yes, I have tried haggis. But you also might want to say, yeah, I have already tried haggis, especially if you don't want any more. I've already <laughs> tried it, thank you. <laughs> so in Italian, we can say, ho già mangiato l'agis. I have already tried or eaten haggis. Okay, another example, another possibility? Another possibility is ancora. Ah, okay, so that one's yet. Ah, ancora. Non ho ancora mangiato l'agis. So, I haven't eaten haggis yet. Or I've still not eaten haggis. Sì. That kind of idea. Sì. I think yet works slightly better. No, non ho ancora mangiato l'agis. I haven't eaten haggis yet. And perhaps one other one? One more, sì. Appena o appena mangiato l'agis. Okay, so literally you've just tried it. You've sì. come from trying it there. Uh-huh. Okay, and you're still you're still happy and you're still enjoying it. Yeah, sì. I, I, I actually love haggis, so I don't know what we're, we're talking <laughs> no, about buono, here. No, buono, buono. O appena mangiato l'agis. I have just eaten haggis. Okay. Now, Francesca, I have a question for you. Sì. These uh, these adverbs, the, the mai, the già, the ancora, the, the appena, mm-hmm. do they always go in the same place? Uh, I would say that normally they are placed between the auxiliary, essere or avere, and the past participle, as we've just seen. Mm-hmm. Non ho mai mangiato. However, especially in spoken Italian, you could find mai, già, ancora, appena in front or after the entire verb. Okay. So, for example, mai ho mangiato laggis. Okay, oh, non ho mangiato mai laggis. It's okay. more emphatic. Yeah, okay. But the, the sort of traditional place to put them would be in between the auxiliary yes. verb, the o, and the past participle, mangiato. Esatto. Okay. We can change that. You'll definitely hear that in different places, um, particularly, as you say, at the beginning or at the end sì. of the, the whole verb there. Okay, I think perhaps it's worth trying some some practice of this. Okay. Do you Va want bene. to ask me some questions, Francesca? Sì, sì. Eh, allora, una domanda è... Hai mai letto La Divina Commedia di Dante? Ah, sì, ho già letto La Divina Commedia di Dante. Veramente, sì, che bravo. Ma... Beh, la consiglio a tutti gli ascoltatori. Ok. E sei mai stato a Pompei? No, non ci sono mai stato. Ok, and well done for using the C as well. <laughs> e hai mai visitato il Canada? Ah, sì, ho appena visitato il Canada. Sì, sì è vero, sì, è vero. due settimane fa. È vero, mi ero dimenticata. <ride> e sei mai andato in Cina? Ah, non sono ancora andato in Cina, ma ci andrò presto. Veramente? Sì, per Coffee Break Chinese. Ah, oh, wow, <ride> che interessante, non sapevo nemmeno questo. Ok, io ti faccio delle domande okay. anche. Ok. Tu hai mai letto La Divina Commedia di Dante? Sì, ho già letto La Divina Commedia. Sei mai stata a Pompei? Eh, 
no, non ci sono ah, mai stata. Ah, dobbiamo andare insieme. Facciamo un episodio di Coffee di Break Italian. Sì, perfetto. <ride> Uh, hai mai visitato il Canada? No, non l'ho mai visitato O forse posso dire non ho ancora visitato okay. il Canada Forse andrò nel futuro Perfetto uh, Sei mai stata in Cina? No, non ci sono mai stata Ma mi piacerebbe Brilliant. Now, here, in both cases, both my answers and Francesca's answers, we've, we've used some slightly different ways to answer these questions, throwing in things like ci, non ci sono mai stato. In my case, I said, I have never been there. Now, we learned ci a few lessons ago, so we know that we can use ci to represent the place. When Francesca asked me, have I ever been to Pompeii? Sei mai stato a Pompeii? No, non ci sono mai stato. Non ci sono mai stato. So the ci is coming before the whole verb, including the auxiliary. Non ci sono. Then we put in the mai before the past participle. Non ci sono mai stato. Mm -hmm. Or I could have said, no, non ci sono stato mai. Sì, più I've enfatico. I've never been there. And I don't <laughs> want to go. I would love to go to Pompeii. Sì. Okay, and a couple of other things. I think, Francesca, when you answered, have you ever read the, 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 the Divine Comedy, La Divina Commedia? Sì. Hai mai letto La Divina Commedia? Sì, l'ho già letta. So, l'ho già letta. That's quite tricky. Sì, sorry. I didn't even think I was using the direct object pronoun. It came kind of naturally. naturally. Yeah. So, <laughs> l'ho, that's l apostrophe o... Già letta. Now, I know that our listeners are thinking, wait a minute, what's going Slow on with down. letta? <laughs> That's letto normally, but in that particular construction, you have to agree with the object. When there's a direct object pronoun, a preceding direct object pronoun, si. in that very specific situation, lo già letta. It's tricky. Let's leave it for season three. I think so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think that's where we're going to leave this discussion of using mai. And we've also looked at ancora and già and appena. appena sì. And we'll be doing more practice of this with Ayla after the break. Bene. Interrompiamo questa trasmissione per una comunicazione importante. If you'd like to make faster progress with your Italian, don't forget that you can use the premium version of this course, which features video versions of the lessons, comprehensive lesson notes and bonus listening materials. Allora, cosa aspetti? What are you waiting for? If you'd like to take your Italian to the next level, go to coffeebreakitalianplus.com. Welcome back. Okay, we've been talking about the passato prossimo, but a particular use of the passato prossimo when we're using the word mai. Have you ever done something? We've learned four responses using già, mai, appena, and ancora. Ancora. So actually, non mai, non ancora, mm -hmm. appena, and già. Da, sì. Appena and già are the, the sort of affirmative ones, sì. but ancora and mai are the more negative, negative. ones. Ayla, tutto bene? Sì, ho capito bene. Brava. Brava, Ayla. But, oh. just to double check, these structures can also be used with avere and essere? Yeah, yeah. Yes. so they can be used with avere verbs, but also with essere verbs. Sì, ad esempio, uh, I could ask you, Ayla, sei mai stata a Firenze? No, non sono mai stata a Firenze. Bravissima. Good, good. Sì. Ayla, can you, see if you can, can do this, can you replace a Firenze with the little pronoun that we were using earlier? Can you remember what that pronoun was? Ci. Ci, good. Okay, so can you now replace a Firenze with ci? Okay. No, non ci sono mai stata. Brava, brava. Because the ci has to come before the full verb. That's the, the part of essere or avere, or in this case essere, definitely because it's ci is going there. Ci sono mai stata. So think carefully about that order of words there. No, non ci sono mai stata. I have never been there. Okay. Okay. 
Well done, Ayla. But let's imagine you visited Florence a while ago. So how would you say, yes, I have already been to Florence? Okay, in that case, I would say, si sono già stata a Firenze. Okay. Or I could also say, si ci sono già stata. Bravissima, perfetto, si. And imagine you haven't visited Florence yet, but you are planning to. Okay. Would this be, no, non sono ancora stata a Firenze. Bravissima, with ancora, si. And then, non... Ci sono ancora stata? Brava, brava. Sì, sì, molto bene. And what about if you had just returned from Florence, if you've just been to Florence? I'll give it a go. Sì, sono appena stata a Firenze. Sì, sono appena stata a a Firenze. Or... Or, Sì, ci sono appena stata. Brava. Ok. Ha capito tutto. Sì, è intelligente (laughs) questa ragazza. (laughs) I've got an idea now. Okay. okay. Are you ready? <laughs> yeah, slightly worried because we know what your ideas can be sometimes. Oh, come like. on. <laughs> I want to play a game mm-hmm. with this new structure. Okay. So I want each of you to think of something really, really special you have done in your life. Okay. okay. <laughs> and we can take a couple of minutes to think. Okay. And then I want you to tell the rest of the group (laughs) what you did and ask uh, if we have ever done the same thing I don't know if it makes sense for example io ho mangiato la pizza e voi avete mai mangiato la pizza we get the idea yeah okay something more exciting than (laughs) eating pizza (laughs) okay let's let's put some music on just to give us a little time to think okay okay Okay, I think have we all got something. Mm. Yeah. Francesca, si, hai trovato qualcosa? Sì, sì, sì. Dai. Inizio io? Sì. Ok, allora. Eh, io sono stata in Pakistan. Mm. E voi siete mai stati in Pakistan? Io non ci sono mai stato. Mi piacerebbe andare, ma non ci sono mai stato. Ok, bravo. Aida, sei, sei già stata in Pakistan? No, non ci sono mai stata. Ok. Allora, Ayla, cosa hai fatto tu? I'm not sure if mine's something special. It's probably something more unusual. Okay. Um, io ho mangiato carne di coccodrillo. Oh, wow. oh coccodrillo! <laughs> e voi avete mai mangiato carne di coccodrillo? E io no, non ho mai mangiato <laughs> carne di coccodrillo. Tu, Mark? Neanch'io. Non ho mai mangiato carne di coccodrillo e non mi piacerebbe. No. Like <laughs> uh. E tu, Mark, una cosa speciale che hai fatto? Allora, io ho suonato il piano per James Bond. Wow! Uh. <laughs> Veramente? Sì, vi spiego tutto dopo. E voi, avete mai suonato il piano per, per James Bond? No, non ho mai suonato il piano per James Bond. E tu, Francesca? Eh, sì, ovviamente, tutti i fine settimana. <laughs> <laughs> no, non ho mai suonato nemmeno io il piano per James Bond. <laughs> Ma complimenti, Mark! <laughs> Uh, I, I should maybe explain that um, I used to play the piano in, in hotels a long, long time ago. And uh, one day Sean Connery was, was in the bar while I was playing. Um, I really wanted to play the, the James Bond theme tune, but I was too scared. So Aww. I decided not to. <laughs> che carino. <laughs> okay, so that's using my and uh, giving responses. What I think we should do is ask our listeners to post something on Facebook to tell us what they have done and perhaps everyone else can contribute. See, it would be very interesting to know the special things our <laughs> listeners <laughs> did in their past. Absolutely. Okay, I think it's time to move to our Café Culturale now and we're going to be talking about um, things that we might have eaten or tried or perhaps we would never try. Sì. Sí. <laughs> Ciao a tutti e benvenuti a un altro Café Culturale. In today's episode, we have introduced a useful structure, I mai provato, When talking about Scottish delicacies, or rather culinary oddities, 
So I've decided to continue with this topic and tell you a little bit about Le stranezze gastronomiche italiane, Italian culinary oddities. Allora, avete mai provato il lampredotto? If you are in Firenze, you definitely must try un panino con il lampredotto, which, I'm afraid to say, non è adatto ai vegetariani. It's not suitable for vegetarians because, believe it or not, it's stomaco della mucca, cow's stomach. If you wander the streets of Palermo and you suddenly feel hungry, stop for un panino con la meusa. Meusa is a Sicilian word meaning spleen. The calf's spleen and lungs are first boiled, then fried together to become the filling of a delicious sandwich covered in sesame seeds. Io personalmente non l'ho mai provato. Personally, I've never tried it. Ma i miei amici siciliani mi assicurano che solo a vederlo viene l'acquolina in bocca. At the sight of it, your mouth waters. And if you thought that sushi was a Japanese invention, head over to the region of Puglia, where you can sample a huge variety of pesce crudo, raw fish, in particolare il polpo, octopus. La bella isola di Sardegna è un paradiso per gli amanti del formaggio, it's heaven for cheese lovers. Avete mai provato il casu marzu sardo? Casu marzu is a Sardinian word meaning rotten cheese and it's a type of goat cheese colonized by cheese fly larvae which give the cheese an exquisite taste. I know this is probably for the strong-hearted only. Heading to the north of Italy, on a cold winter day in Bergamo, you can warm up with polenta e osei, polenta with game birds, This might sound very odd, but the recipe dates back to the days when people had very little food and were forced to eat what nature had to offer. Before I finish, I would also like to mention my own region, Piemonte. As you probably know, we are very close to France. Allora, indovinate cosa mangiamo? Guess what we eat? Male rane, ovviamente. Frogs, of course. Fried or stewed, they are one of my dad's favorite local dishes. Okay, I think I've given you enough ideas for your next culinary trip to Italy. And don't worry, if these dishes are not to your liking, anywhere you are, just around the corner, you'll find some reassuring and comforting pizza. Allora, buon appetito a tutti e al prossimo caffè! Well, that's it for this episode of Coffee Break Italian and we hope that you've enjoyed it. We hope also that you, you weren't put off by Francesca's culinary oddities. Scusate! <laughs> we can give you more culinary oddities and indeed more practice of mai and appena, ancora and uh, già in our bonus episode and there's the bonus audio episode where there's more practice of this and some translations there are the lesson notes and there's also the video version of this lesson and you can find all of that at coffeebreakitalianplus.com and don't forget you can follow us on facebook that's at facebook.com slash coffeebreakitalian and there you can post your experiences and share something exciting or something special or something interesting or odd (laughs) that you've done and then everyone else can let you know if they've also done that or if they've never done that using those expressions that we've covered in this episode. Buona idea, Mark. And don't forget, you can always find us on Twitter at Learn Italian. And if you would like to find out what happens behind the scenes here at Coffee Break Languages, search for Coffee Break Languages on Instagram. That's it. We'll be back again soon with more Coffee Break Italian. Until then, grazie molte e arrivederci. Alla prossima. Ciao, ciao. You have been listening to a production of the Coffee Break Academy for the Radiolingua Network. Copyright 2017, Radiolingua Limited. Recording copyright 2017, Radiolingua Limited. All rights reserved. <laughs>